BMW GS keeps getting more technologically advanced and keeps creeping up in the price as well. They keep adding features, but are the features actually useful? Are you actually gonna benefit from them as a rider? Today I'm gonna to give you a tour of this 2021 R1250 GS Adventure, show you all the features and benefits of this bike, but I'm gonna highlight the brand new features for 2021 and tell you if I think they're actually useful. So before we get started on a tour of this bike, I know a lot of you are probably wondering, should you upgrade from your current GS? So let's just cover that really quick. So if you're riding a GS that is an oil air-cooled bike like 2012 or prior, I would definitely say yes, you should think about upgrading because the new bikes are so much smoother, so much more powerful, faster, more responsive, and the technology really, really benefits you as a rider. What if you own a 2013 to 2018 1200 liquid-cooled GS? So that one, I would still say yes, you should consider upgrading. I'd recommend test riding a 1250 to see if the added power and torque and technology are of a benefit to you. One of the huge benefits, if you do upgrade from that generation, is gonna be going to the TFT, unless you have a very, very late 1200 that had the TFT, but the TFT screen is a huge benefit over the old uh, dials and the little LCD screen. Now finally, what if you have a 2019 or 2020 R1250 GS or GS Adventure? I think that is where it's a really tough decision because there's not many added features on the 21 that I think would really be worth, you know, selling your bike and paying taxes on a new one and doing all that. You've got heated seats, you've got a little bit improved technology, you've got the adaptive headlight, you've got the turn signals, a few things, but you know, they're probably not going to be a huge deal for you. All right, so let's start here at the front of the bike as we start this tour. So the GSAs all come with the tubeless spoked wheels. On the standard GS, you can either get cast wheels or tubeless spoke wheels for an extra cost. Looking at the brakes, so BMW had an issue the past couple years. They switched to a BMW branded caliper, but it was actually made by a company called Hayes. And they had a lot of leaking problems and they had a stop sale and a recall and all this stuff. So uh, if you buy a GS right now, you should be getting a bike with Brembo brakes. So the dealerships are changing those out. And then I think at the factory, they're making a change over back to the Brembo calipers, which personally I'm very happy about. Uh, the brakes on the GS are amazing. They work better than almost any other motorcycle on the road. And that has a lot to do with the telelever suspension. So just briefly, what is telelever suspension? Telever suspension is a unique front end suspension design that almost no other motorcycle uses. And it separates the steering and the braking forces. So what I like about the tail lever is a few things. When you're hard on the brakes, the front of the bike doesn't dive, it doesn't pitch. So what happens is when you're braking hard, the rake and trail of the bike don't really change that much as they would on a normal bike where the front end dives down. So it makes the handling much more confidence inspiring and makes you be able to ride faster with more confidence. When you ride a tail lever bike, because when you're braking hard or you're cornering hard, it's still able to have the full suspension travel to deal with bumps in the road. And so by separating sort of the suspension and the steering and the braking, it just allows for a more refined ride and a larger margin of safety. Once you get used to this, it's very, very hard to go back. And it's why I bought yet another GS, even though there's so many great competitive bikes out there. Going back to the brakes for a second, BMW uses linked braking, and the reason I like linked brakes, well, first of all, what does that mean? It means that when you use the front brake lever, it also activates the rear brake at a much lower level. The reason I like it is a couple things. Um, I don't have to use my rear brake lever very much. I find that on a GS, I mostly just use my front brake lever and it activates both brakes. When you're off-road and you're standing up, it's kind of hard to reach the rear brake pedal. So the thing I like about it is you can be navigating tricky terrain or coming down a hill and just standing up on the bike and using the front brake and it's giving you nice even braking going down the hill. I just find it to be a big benefit. So let's talk about a few other things up here at the front of the bike. So we've got the stainless steel crash bars which come on the GSA. I have a really good video comparing the standard GS and the GSA if you wanna watch it. You get these LED fog lights or driving lights. I'm not sure what they really call them, but they do provide quite a nice spread of light right out in front of you. So they're very, very useful. Also, it's a huge safety factor when you're in traffic. Um, you get this nice triangle of light because these lights are so far apart and you can really see this bike coming. Let's talk about the headlight. So the headlight is a big main feature of the 2021. So what they did is they put in an adaptive headlight. So what it means for you is that the headlight steers through corners and not only goes side to side, but up and down. So when, if you've ridden a motorcycle at night on curvy roads, especially, or going around corner, you notice that when you, when you keel a bike over, you can't really see because the headlight dips down. The best way I can describe the adaptive headlight is that it feels like you're not cornering. Like the light just stays 
the light points through the corner and you don't really notice that you're even cornering. And so huge safety feature, I really do think this is a, is a great idea. One more thing on the lighting on the 2021 is that the turn signals, now they call them a cruising light, which is just a weird German way of saying that the turn signals light up now when you're driving down the road. So they work as a turn signal, but they have a lower intensity as a, as a, as a driving light. So in addition to the three main lights on the bike, you've also got these lights and it's a very nice profile from the front, gives you very good visibility. Now, unfortunately, on, in the U.S. bikes, on the back turn signals, they don't act as running lights, but I think maybe in some countries they do. Just depends on the laws of certain countries out there. One last thing on the front of the bike. So let's talk about the wind protection. So you've got the larger windshield that the GSA comes with, with which I find pretty effective, but I did go and use the spoiler. I did put on the Puage uh, large spoiler, the clip-on version, and that solves all my buffeting. It had just a little bit of buffeting with the stock windshield. It also comes with these winglets, which are really, really nice. They help keep some air off your torso. And overall for a adventure bike, I've ridden most all adventure bikes, and this has the best wind management of any of them out there. So let's come around and talk about the boxer engine just briefly. Um, there's other videos that go into this more, but the reason I like a boxer engine design is it keeps the weight very low in the motorcycle. And for a 590 pound bike, this bike handles like you wouldn't believe on the trail and on the street. It's really uh, a benefit that other bikes don't have. So the shift cam system, I have a video in the past couple weeks, which I'll link here about the shift cam engine and why I think that the variable valves are good. Basically, you get a ton of torque and power at all different RPMs and the bike is very smooth, very responsive, and it feels just very modern and very punchy, which is something you really couldn't say, honestly, about some of the older uh, boxer engines of the past. If you go back to the 1100s and the 1150s, they didn't quite compete with some of the more modern engines of the day back then, but this one really keeps up. Now, it doesn't win the horsepower wars with KTM and Ducati and things like that, but 136 horsepower and 106 foot-pound of torque, trust me, it's more than you ever need, even with a passenger or a million pounds of luggage and panniers on the bike. Okay, so let's work our way around to the gas tank, the handlebars, dash, things like that. So a few things, minor things before we start. Hand guards come on the GSs. I mentioned the winglets. Um, you get very functional mirrors. These mirrors are rock steady, no vibration at any speed, up to 100 miles an hour, not that I would know, officer. So above the instruments here is the mount for the BMW Navigator, which I'm not using at the moment, but it integrates well to the bike's control system if you want to use the GPS. It also has a keyed uh, lock here to lock your GPS in place. One note on the 2021 bike is that they finally give you a USB outlet. So instead of just a, like a power outlet socket, you actually, they just give you the USB outlet. But then I have other power outlets under the seat that came on this bike, which I think is factory from BMW, but it could be my dealer, but it has a Deltran battery tender and also an SAE battery tender connection. Um, and it also has a power light outlet too. So you actually have three more outlets kind of under the seat area. The handlebars on the GS are really nice and wide. I've always loved that about the GS. Um, the ergonomics on this bike are amazing for someone my height. I'm five foot eleven, and the bars are perfectly wide enough. You get tons of leverage. They're also high enough that I feel no need for bar risers. It's incredibly comfortable to stand up all day on this bike as well as sit down. And I've ridden all the adventure bikes out there right now. I have a V-Strom 1050 in the test fleet, and um, this the ergonomics on this are far superior to most bikes. It just set up really well from the factory, and I see no need to modify it. So a couple more things as we look at the front of the bike. So you get this little storage cubby in the front here of the gas tank, which is good for like earplugs. You can't fit a phone in here. You could fit like earplugs or some um, visor wipes or something like that. It's kind of useful, I guess, not bad. Um, of course, this bike has the keyless ride. Most GSs are gonna have this. So keyless ignition and keyless gas cap, which is nice because when you stop for gas, you don't have to take a key out or anything. Put the, you just lift this up and you can get gas and then close it again, locks. The bike does have a steering lock. You just have to hold down the, turn the bar to the left and hold it down and that will lock your steering for th anti-theft. I mentioned in other videos, but the adjustable windshield, you can do this while you're riding. It's got a knob right here. You can turn your windshield up and down and that's very big advantage because most bikes with adjustable windshields, you have to stop and get off the bike to adjust it, which is stupid because wind is always changing. Your speed is changing. The weather's changing. I want to be able to reach down and adjust it as I ride. Thank you, BMW, for sticking with that. Going back to handlebars and the controls for a second, 
One nitpick I do have on BMW for the price, they really need to give you backlighting on all these buttons. So your menu buttons, cruise control, suspension, turn signals, um, you know, engine start stop mode, heated grips, all those should be backlit. I don't know why it's so hard for them to do that, but please BMW, if you're listening, please backlight these because when you're getting familiar with the bike or even when you're more familiar with it, it's kind of hard to know what button is what at night because like this menu button feels the exact same as the suspension and the traction control button. So I'd really like to have them lit up. So anyway, let's talk about the TFT dashboard and some of the electronic updates that the 2021 bike has. Okay, so starting off with the TFT. First of all, the TFT on this BMW is so good. It's so crisp and bright. You can adjust the brightness. I have mine turned all the way up, but it's, it's so much contrast that no matter how much sun is hitting the screen or dust or whatever is on it, you can always read it. It's so legible. Um, the, the numbers and, the, and all of the uh, indicators are so logically laid out. And I've used other TFTs on KTM. The V-Strom has this LCD with all this weird information that I don't like, but th this TFT is very good. I know BMW has a, even a larger TFT that they have on like the GS and some of their uh, touring bikes. And that's probably gonna eventually find its way to the GS as well. So as we delve into the electronics here, I'll try to keep this as, as simple as I can. But on the 2021 bikes, they've changed how the riding modes work. So prior to this, you had to put in a plug under the seat, which was the Pro plug, if, you, if your bike even came with that package, which allowed access to Enduro Pro and Dynamic Pro mode. Why are those modes important? Well, because in those modes, you have less intervention of ABS and traction control, but you can also customize the intervention levels that you want of those various safety systems, and then it keeps that in memory, and also it saves that setting when you cycle the bike on and off. So the Pro modes are something you really want to use. I use the Enduro Pro and the Dynamic Pro, and I have the settings tuned how I want. All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, on the 2021 bikes, what they have is something called riding mode pre-selection. So here's what you do. You go into the menu of the bike under the settings when you're at a stop and you go to the menu of the riding modes and you can select up to four modes that you wanna access with quick access from your handlebar button right here. So you choose whatever four modes you want and then that's what you can easily cycle through as you're riding. So to change modes when you're riding, you simply uh, hit the mode button to the mode you want, comes up on the screen, you close the throttle for a second and then it activates that mode. So you have to know what four modes you want uh, to use and you can only select four. I kind of wish you could select like five or something. I don't know why they did this, but anyway, it works pretty well and it's much more convenient than the old bikes where you had to put in a plug and then you only had access to certain modes. That was nonsense and something I complained about in my previous reviews. So since we're talking about electronics, let me briefly talk about the IMU or the inertial measurement unit, the computer in the bike that senses all the motion and acceleration of the bike. So for 2021, they've upgraded it to a six axis unit and they've made it more sophisticated. So what it means for you basically is it's sensing all the acceleration and pitch of the bike in six different axes and it's adjusting your ABS, traction control, hill hold assist and all that stuff and optimizing that for what motions the bike is going through. Basically what it means is that when you ride the bike, it's like floating on a cloud of air and it kind of sorts everything out and it just allows you to ride in more comfort and ride faster. Honestly, that's how I feel about it. The technology, they have it totally dialed in on this thing. So I need to talk about the eco mode. You may have seen in the press materials or the video that they put out uh, that they have something called eco riding mode. Now, I kind of had to laugh when I saw this because it's like every auto manufacturer, you know, you see this in cars now, it's like, oh, eco mode, you know, and all it really does is make the throttle softer so that you're, you know, using less throttle input, I guess, but it makes the whole vehicle slower. Uh, but on this motorcycle, actually, it's more advanced than that. So what the eco riding mode is, is it actually uses the variable valve system, the shift cam system to uh, make the bike more economical. But I need to work more on this and test it more. I need to talk to BMW about this because I have a concern about it because when I tried using it, well, first of all, it gives you this bar up on the dashboard, which shows you how economical you're being as you twist the throttle. But the problem that I'm finding, and I don't know if there's a workaround for this, and I'm kind of concerned about it because when I had it in eco mode and I pulled out to make a pass on the highway to pass around a few slow trucks on a two lane road, I didn't have any power. I put the throttle all the way and it was incredibly slow and I could barely make the pass. So I feel like there should be some sort of an override when you open the throttle all the way. And it doesn't seem to me that there is. Now, if I'm wrong about that, please correct me and I'll correct this video, but I would suggest not using the eco mode until we kind of figure this out because to me, it seemed almost dangerous to be using it. But again, I could be way wrong on that. Okay, working our way around to the sides of the bike. So I mentioned the crash protection. We talked about the engine already. 
So they give you like a frame protector here to protect from scratching, which I think is nice. I don't remember the old bikes having that, this protection here, but I could be wrong. It's kind of nice because it prevents your boot from scratching up the frame. All right, so the foot peg is a large enduro style foot peg, which you don't get on the standard GS. One thing that I showed in my last video, but I didn't talk about was this adjustable brake lever. So what you can do is you can flip this little part down. So when you're standing up off-road, you have easier access to it. You don't have to reach so far down because it's awkward. And then when you're on the street, this flips up. So that's a nice thing because the aftermarket solution to this is a couple hundred dollars. So it's nice that you just get that from the factory. The factory center stand is great. It does have a plastic um, shield here to kind of protect the shock here. The factory skid plate is garbage. It's a little tiny uh, thing that you know you might serve pizza on and it doesn't cover the exhaust or the engine so that's going to be a necessary upgrade for sure <sighs> passenger foot pegs here's those two power outlets i talked about uh, for battery tenders or electric clothing or whatever you want to do i talked about the dynamic esa i talked about the heated seats the seats are very very comfortable on this bike probably the most comfortable factory seats that i've sat on the gs for the past few years has gotten pretty good with the seats i mentioned the seat heating You've got the luggage racks in the back, which come on the GSA, nice stainless steel. You can mount whatever kind of panniers you want to them. The exhaust or the catalyzer, whatever you want to call it, is huge, but deal with it. It is what it is. To meet Euro 4, Euro 5, whatever the emissions are, they have to put these huge exhausts on all motorcycles now. And if you think this is bad, look at the new Suzuki Hayabusa. Uh, the exhaust is, has a nice deep grunt sound to it. It's pretty quiet and I would not change it. I had an, a Kropovich on my last GS and I didn't like it. I would just save the money, stick to the factory exhaust. Coming around to the back of the bike, there's just a few things I want to note. The factory tires on most of these seem to be these Bridgestone Battle Axe Adventure A41R. That's a mouthful. Um, same tires also came on my V-Strom 1050 XT test bike, which I thought was interesting. They're a good road tire. They're like a 90-10 tire. So in the dirt, they're fine on dry dirt, hard pack, but any sand, mud, deep gravel or anything, you're going to really flounder. So. You know, for most GS riders, I think these are a great tire. They feel great on the street. Great grip, uh, great traction, they feel good. Comes with this rear uh, mud deflector so things don't spray up. You've got the LED brake light, the LED turn signals, which unfortunately, at least in the US, are not running lights. I mentioned the luggage rack. The rear brake is a Brembo two-piston uh, caliper, works really well. I mentioned the link braking system. Uh, let's talk about the final drive for a second. So I'm a big fan of shaft drive. It's one of the reasons I like having the GS as opposed to other bikes. I like the low maintenance. I like the quiet, no chain slapping around, no oil flying everywhere. I don't have to clean the chain. I don't have to adjust the chain as it wears out. So I prefer shaft drive. That's just me. Uh, BMW shaft drive is something called pair lever and the pair lever basically has an arm on it uh, that prevents shaft jacking or the shaft effect that old bikes used to have where you would open the throttle and the bike would like lift up because of the force going through the shaft drive. Well, they don't have that on BMWs because they've had this pair lever system for a long time. Other bikes have similar things. It's no big deal. One or two quick things I forgot to mention. The GSA gas tank is 7.9 US gallons. I'll put the conversion here, which gives you a range of over 350 miles. I get between 40 to 50 miles per gallon, depending on how I'm riding. Standard GS has a 5.3 gallon tank, which is good for around 200 US miles. You notice that we're not talking about aftermarket stuff in this video because that's gonna be separate video series later. But if you wanna know, yes, the windshield deflector is a Puege, uh, the large version clip-on, and it works amazing, solves all the buffeting on this bike for me. I don't have much else on it. I have a pair of $20 highway pigs I bought it for Avzilla and bolted to the engine crash bars. I have, well, I have soft bags. I have the Bumo or Bumat uh, Extra Mata soft bags, which are great. They clip onto the factory luggage racks. I have a little bag back here. Um, kickstand foot, you know, to enlarge that. I have a mount for my phone, just a Ram X grip mount. I have some GoPro mounts. Um, not too much other than that so far. Oh, I do have the cylinder head protections from Machine Art Moto, which I recommend because if you drop the bike or crash the bike in the dirt or whatever, the engine crash bars only go so far. That protects from major impact, but rocks and stuff can still come through and puncture your engine case. That's one downside of the boxer. So put those Machine Art Moto covers on or whatever covers you want. I think Touratec and BMW have some too. I just like these. I did have to pull the crash bars off to install them if you're curious. So yeah, I put those on, but that's about it. And we'll cover aftermarket stuff in a later video. But the point for me of buying a GSA is I don't want to have to go buy a bunch of stuff. I paid $25,000 for this bike and it has pretty much everything I need. And that's what I like. 
Okay, so final thoughts on the 2021 GS. I feel like they made some incremental changes. I like the adaptive headlight. I like the updated electronics. Everything they're doing keeps making the riding experience better. Is it worth the price to upgrade from your current bike? Well, that's a decision that you're gonna to have to make for yourself. Go to the dealer, test ride them, check out the features, see if you like it. Um, BMWs have great resale value, so no worries there. They have great financing plans, which we'll talk about in another video if you wanna finance it, which is not a bad thing. And I don't know why people demonize financing all the time, but we'll talk about that in another video. I also wanted to say that I have zero affiliation with BMW as a company. I have zero affiliation with any dealership. I paid a normal price for this bike from a normal dealer. I didn't get any special deal because I'm on YouTube. So I just want you guys to know that if it sounds like I'm kind of gushing over the bike, it's because this is the bike I bought. That's why I bought it, because I like it. I've ridden all the adventure bikes and this is still my favorite just for my personal reasons. I like the shaft drive. I love the tail lever front suspension. That's like a game changer for me. I love the huge gas tank and I like the boxer engine. I just like those unique things that the GS has. I've always wanted a GSA and I'm really, really happy that I got one. It does, for an adventure bike, it has everything that I could absolutely want. And I'm gonna use it on a lot of long trips and tours, fingers crossed, time allowing and family allowing and things like that. So super happy with it, have zero regrets, zero complaints. If this was stolen or totaled, I would go out and buy the exact same bike again tomorrow. I would not even consider the other bikes for my own money to spend on them because I've, I've ridden them, frankly. So anyway, I hope this was useful. If you're considering a new GS or GSA, I really hope it was. Give me some feedback in the comments, what you wanna see in future videos. Let me know, I'll make any videos you guys want. So please let me know. We'll have a lot more riding videos going forward in the future as I get some of my camera mounting and audio set up with my helmet. Um, but yeah, I hope this was useful. Please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for supporting the channel as I grow this channel. Really appreciate you guys out there. Uh, ride safe, be safe on the trail, and we'll see you out there.